Hello everyone, my name is Pixorius and welcome back for episode 8 of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. The chickens have invaded my house. <laughs> I actually brought them in here because it's slightly easier to keep track of them if they are literally cooped up inside one of these places. And I've been breeding them occasionally with seeds because I have way too many seeds right now from all of that wheat farming. But enough about chickens, we have a very important mission today. Today we are going to the nether and it's a good thing it's a nice beautiful bright day outside because things are about to get a lot darker. So in order to get to the nether you need yourself at least 10 obsidian. I've got 16 from our little trip down to lava level at the last episode and I think this little spot here where we dug out our first stone is actually going to be a fantastic place to set up a nether portal. Nether portals are a means of traveling between dimensions in Minecraft. They are a means of getting to the nether dimension, which is kind of a scary place if you're not prepared for it. So I need to make sure we are going in with absolutely everything we possibly can. Now, the thing is, it is a little easier to die in the nether by accident than it is in the overworld. There is a lot of lava around, there are a lot of dangerous monsters, and I might not want to bring my diamond pickaxe with me because it's the only one I've got right now. <laughs> so I think I might end up leaving that in the house along with anything else that I don't consider absolutely necessary. We also need to bring a lot of cobblestone and I need to craft a flint and steel so we can light up the portal. Now let's see if we have any flint anywhere in these supplies. You get flint by mining gravel a lot of the time, and it seems like I don't have any right now. I don't think we seem to have come across gravel at all, really, which is very odd. Anyway, I'm gonna grab a little bit of cobblestone while I can, because that will be a little useful later on. And we're going to go out in search of gravel because we need it for the flint. Now, I have made myself a new iron axe and a new iron shovel off camera because these are going to be very, very useful tools. And look there across the way, that there is gravel. In fact, this looks like a very nice gravelly patch of mountains, which will be useful later on if you want to acquire gravel. Gravel is useful for a lot of things, not just for harvesting flint. There we go, we got one more or less immediately but you can also use it to make concrete and even to add detail to your paths and you get that lovely like crunchy sound effect when you're walking around on it. So it's kind of worth grabbing a little bit of gravel. But early on, all you really need is to harvest a couple of gravel until you get a flint, which is just an occasional drop from harvesting a gravel blocks instead of getting the block you will get the flint. And flint is useful for two things. You either use it to make arrows using a stick and a chicken feather with a flint on the top, or you use it with an iron ingot to make a flint and steel. And flint and steel has the interesting property of being able to right click it and set things on fire. Now that will be very useful in the creation of our nether portal because we need it to light the portal. This section over here, which we've dug out, is actually going to be slightly too large for the standard nether portal. Normally, when you make a nether portal, you can make it two blocks wide and then three blocks tall on each side with two blocks at the top. And that is the minimum amount of space that you need for a nether portal. So if you imagine two blocks there and one, two, three up the side, one, two, and then one, two, three down the side there, you can skip out the corners. You don't actually need to put the corners in a nether portal. That would be 10 blocks total of obsidian. So our nether portal is going to be a little bit larger, but it can actually be made, you can make a nether portal in dimensions of up to 23 by 23 blocks. So it can get pretty large if you want it to. Thing is, right here we don't want this to be large, we want this to be relatively small, but all you need to do once you've got a solid frame of obsidian that's at least two blocks wide and three blocks tall, is right click and you get this ominous looking purple swirly portal and that is going to be our entrance to the nether. Now you want to put this, ideally at the start, you probably want to put this a few blocks away from where you're living because you get this noise pretty much constantly. And I don't like having that noise around because it gets a little bit annoying. <laughs> so like, like with the cows and sheep and everything, I tend to build that stuff a little bit further away from my house. But you can see it from a distance so you know where you're going to if you want to head to the nether. And like I said, I'm going to put my diamond pickaxe in here for now. This iron pickaxe is kind of on its last legs, so I'm not going to bring that with me. I might make a brand new iron pickaxe. Now, have I had any iron or gold or anything smelting in here? Oh, I have, fantastic. Let's collect the experience from that and let's make ourselves another iron pickaxe real fast. Now, all we need to do is make some sticks. 
We'll probably make the iron pickaxe from the recipe book here. And you'll notice on the recipe book, there are tabs down the side here that will allow you to switch between different categories of items. So once the huge list of stuff becomes kind of too big, if you've got a whole bunch of items in your inventory and you can craft basically anything in the game, using those tabs will actually help you separate it out into the different categories of items. So there you go, that's tools, blocks, miscellaneous things and food, redstone components, that kind of thing. So we have ourselves an iron pickaxe. Let's quickly sort through our inventory and make sure that we've popped everything precious away in here because we don't want to accidentally lose that if we end up coming a cropper in the nether. We will put the obsidian in there as well, but it can be useful to bring some more obsidian with you because not only do you need a portal from the overworld to the nether, you also need a portal back. And the portal back should be created automatically when you arrive in the nether, but just in case it ends up going out for whatever reason, like if something explodes next to it, the portal can go out, it's sometimes useful to at least bring a flint and steel and maybe some obsidian with you so you can create a portal back to the overworld. And there are some interesting properties about the nether which we will explain once we get in there, but I'm gonna put the rest of this stuff in here. I'm gonna put the apples and the eggs and stuff in here. This is a kind of food chest I've set up next to the bed because food is usually fairly important to have if we die and respawn here. So let's do this, let's go to the nether. I think I've talked about this for long enough. It's time to actually go and do it. Let's hop in here and we will see the, the screen start to swirl and mysterious particles appear and then the nether will load in. There we go, we've got the advancement, we need to go deeper and this is actually a fairly typical nether spawn point, which is good. This is sort of what we need. It's wide open terrain, there is lots of this ugly, gooey looking block around us. This is called netherrack. We will be seeing a lot of it here in the nether. And our nether portal has emerged right on the edge of a kind of gravel shelf here in the nether. I do want to quickly mine out this just in case it falls. <laughs> because occasionally, because gravel is one of the blocks that's affected by gravity, it can simply drop out from underneath you. So you want to be careful that you're not standing on it in case there's actually a sheer drop behind there. And the first thing we want to do is protect this nether portal a little, bit, a little bit, because like I said, it can potentially go out if something explodes next to it. And believe me, we will meet the explosive parts of the nether very, very soon, especially with an open area like this. So we're going to drop down some cobblestone like so, just so we can maybe guard the nether portal a couple of blocks in each direction. We don't need to worry too much about this side over here because this is actually fairly well protected, but maybe we'll put just a little a little barrier around the outside there because cobblestone is a very good blast resistant block. This will not break if a, uh, a fireball hits it, for example, and anybody who's been to the nether in Minecraft before probably knows what I'm talking about at this point, but we will drop down a quick shelter here just so we can get this all cordoned off. In an ideal world, we would completely close this off with cobblestone and put a door on the outside or something like that so it isn't, it's easy to, uh, to run in here and hide. But ultimately, uh, this is going to be our way back to the overworld, so we, uh, we should keep it pretty well protected. Now, the other things you'll notice in the nether is that there are a lot of lava columns and lava lakes around the place, lava falls and things like that. Water is completely not present in the nether. In fact, if you try and place down a water bucket, it evaporates into steam because this is supposed to be a very, very hot place. Essentially, it is Minecraft's equivalent of hell. So what you want to do here is be very, very careful because if you are in lava or on fire in the nether, you cannot put yourself out as easily as you could in the overworld. So it's important to maintain a little bit more cautious activity when you're in the nether. Now let's take a look around and see what's nearby. Up there in the ceiling is a patch of glowstone, which is a light emitting block, which you should be able to harvest and use to light stuff up in the overworld. It's very nice to take that some of that back. Over here we also have quartz, which is going to be a very useful material later on in the game, and is also be, it's quite nice for building with. You can build quartz pillars if you want to build in a kind of Greek or Roman looking style, or even add a little stylistic flair to some different types of builds. Now as we wander around the nether, you will find that there are occasional mobs. There are occasional mobs that appear here, monsters and the like, but the ones you will encounter most are called zombie pigmen. You can see some over there in the distance, they might despawn by the time I get to them, but they are normally passive mobs. They will not attack unless you attack them, and then they will attack 
en masse. <laughs> they will, every single pigman within a certain radius will come and attack you if you attack them. So it is very important right now to not attack the pigmen, especially when we are currently not that well defended. Even though I made some enchanted protection armor in the last episode, we will need to make sure we do not attack any pigmen just yet because they will wreck our day. <laughs> they, will, they will not be team players. They will attack us without mercy. So let's take a quick look around here. We also have this wonderful stuff. This is soul sand. And soul sand is an interesting block for a number of reasons. The first of which being that as you're walking over it, you actually get slower. You get dragged down by the soul sand. So <laughs> you ideally want to kind of jump around on soul sand as long as you know that you've got a safe place to jump to so that you can be a little bit careful about where you tread because the soul sand will make you slower and more vulnerable to attack. Now we need to make sure that we remember where our portal is in the distance here. So in fact, I might actually head back over here and take the coordinates of this portal by pressing F3 to bring up the debug screen and then taking a screenshot. The other interesting thing about the nether is that maps do not work here. If you've created a map, which we haven't done for our little overworld section yet, but once you create maps, they do not work in the nether at all. There will be no visible map because the nether actually has a ceiling. It is not open to the sky. Therefore, if you try to make a map of this place, you can't really be seen from the top down. If you imagine like a, a satellite image like they use on Google Earth or something like that, it, it cannot be taken from here. So when you try and make a map of the nether, you won't get any significant results. You probably won't even get to see what the coordinates you're at and the, uh, the directional indicator tends to spin around on a map of the nether. So it is not super easy to navigate in this place. And to that end, we will be figuring out a way of navigating, uh-oh, here are the pigmen. The pigmen are spawning in now, <laughs> but we don't need to worry too much about them. What we do need to do is set up a means of navigation. And this right here is how we're going to do it. We're going to lay a trail of cobblestone and an interesting way of navigating, which was pioneered, if you like, by some of the early Minecraft folks and has been popularized by uh, Impulse SV's friend Skizzleman. <laughs> is, this is called the Scumpus, as, as, <laughs> as, as it was... Uh, invented by Skizzleman. What you do is you place a cobblestone block down and you put a torch on the side of it facing in the direction you want to travel to get home. And that's actually a really useful thing to do. So it's definitely worth a try. <laughs> and if you, uh, if you end up going over this way, then you keep going, you place a torch on that side, which leads to that cobblestone block. And obviously you want to place them in a spot that is going to be fairly visible to you on the way back. You will not find any cobblestone occurring naturally in the nether. So it's actually really useful to have a block that you can spot from a distance and you go, okay, that's not naturally appearing in the nether. So you might wonder, Pix, what are we doing here in the first place? Why have we come to this hellish place where water cannot be placed and there are zombie pigs all around us? Well, good question. This is part of Minecraft's progression. This is a very important place because here we will find structures called nether fortresses. Now these are typically fairly hard to find because you will not really have a good idea of where to find them as soon as you first come into the nether. But with a little bit of exploration and a little bit of careful navigation, we should be able to find one. And when we do, there are a couple of monsters there that will become very, very useful to us. The first of these is blazes. Blazes are these kind of spinning fiery monsters and they typically uh, will drop blaze rods and blaze rods can be broken down into blaze powder, which can be used in potion making and in the making of items which will allow you to access the end portal in Minecraft, which will take you to the Ender Dragon, which is the final boss of Minecraft, and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to defeat the dragon, and that's kind of the end of the game, but it's also kind of the beginning of the game for a lot of people. Now you see that thing floating in the air over there? That guy, uh, I'm using Optifine now by the way, but I might take that off for future videos. Uh, this guy over here is called a Ghast, and normally they float around making these creepy sort of noises, but occasionally they will spot you and they will send a fireball in your direction. And so what you do with that <laughs> is you try and use a bow and arrow to deflect it or you try and use your sword to deflect it and then the ghast despawns. Wonderful. <laughs> Ghasts actually maintain quite a decent distance from the player, so a lot of the time they will not even spot you and even when they do, they're at a distance where Minecraft decides to naturally despawn them occasionally. So these ghasts seem to keep disappearing on me. But the fireballs can be pretty dangerous. You need to dodge them or deflect them where you can. And if you shoot them with a bow is going to be the most effective way of taking down a ghast right now. 
eventually, a couple of arrows should take a gas down, and they can drop some very useful stuff. So it's sometimes worth being nearby to make sure that you can grab what they drop. Now, I can't see a nether fortress in the distance just yet. They are very ominous-looking structures. They're big and blocky. You should be able to spot them. So I'm going to take a quick look around, but I'm going to keep leaving these cobblestone blocks around me just so I know that I can find the right way back. Now, let's hop over here. Let's maybe jump over this soul sand. And obviously, there are large lava lakes down there at the bottom of the nether. You really do not want to fall to your death in the nether because that could mean losing everything. So we do have to be very careful about what we do, how we navigate around here. Luckily, a lot of this looks very flat. I'd say we've gotten very lucky with this nether spawn because it's uh, it's often the case that you will spawn on the edge of a cliff or over a lava lake or something like that, and it can be very, very difficult to navigate. So as we roam around here, we should hopefully be able to find ourselves a nether fortress with some speed. Now, again, remember what I was talking about, about the gravel being on ledges? This is a prime example of that. A couple of blocks of gravel here are out over the void, and if we break them like so, they start to fall away. Anytime a block next to a floating block updates, it will end up falling away. So we want to be very careful about running around on this gravel shelf over here, and we might be able to make it to somewhere safe, but if a ghast fireball ends up hitting this, for example, it will probably end up breaking the entire thing, and that's not something we want, so how about we try and play it a little safe here and make our way across the gravel as fast as we possibly can. Now the terrain in the nether is very, very treacherous. It's full of all of these ravines and, and places to drop out of the world, and I... <laughs> I'm very, very cautiously bridging over to another side here. But luckily, as I said before, cobblestone is fairly resistant. And if a ghast fireballs it, it's, more, it's going to be more of a danger to you than it is the bridge. So if you make a decent too wide bridge like this, maybe make some sort of safety rails along the side like this so you don't fall, you're normally going to be okay. But right now, I've just used up the last of my cobblestones, so I'm running out of building supplies pretty quickly. And at this point, it can be a good idea to retreat back to the overworld, do a quick bit of mining, grab a little bit of stone, or alternatively, if you're feeling brave, you can grab some of the netherrack from the surrounding environment and use that. But netherrack is a very soft block. It has very low blast resistance, and if a ghast fireballs it, it will get destroyed very easily. So it is definitely uh, worth keeping that in mind when you're using it for bridges over lava because if a ghast hits it then you are in you're in deep deep trouble the other problem now is that we've run out of the material i was using to make the scumpus to uh, point us in the correct direction on the way home so i am going to have to be a little careful about what i do here we're going to light this up so it's nice and visible and i might still use torches to light my way back i'll just have to keep an eye out for where the torches are and right here i'll use torches on every other step here just to point out that this is the staircase that leads in the right direction to our portal on the way back but you can see why we want to bring some more obsidian with us in future because if you need to make an emergency portal back to the overworld it's going to be useful to have some obsidian on you one other amazing fact about the nether and it's something that we will end up using to our advantage in the near future is that the nether can actually be used to fast travel over vast distances in the overworld. So if you imagine that you're traveling eight blocks in the overworld, that is actually mapped to one block in the nether. So the further you travel in the nether, you'll travel eight times farther in the overworld. And when you place a portal, you'll come out at the coordinates that are eight times where you traveled in the nether. It's a little bit difficult to uh, <laughs> to explain verbally, but it's, it's mostly a question of mathematics. Uh, wait a second, is that, is that just a dark space over there, or is that actually the entrance to a nether fortress? Let's take a quick look over here real fast. Ooh, you know what? I think we found one. This right here is nether brick, and this can actually be made by smelting netherrack into brick blocks, but this is also a sign that we are close to a nether fortress. Do you see that big pillar over there in the distance? That there is the pillar of a nether fortress, and right here... We have found our way in. So let me pop a couple of torches down over here. There we go. We've made the advancement. We have stepped inside the boundary of a nether fortress. And I'm actually going to take a few of these nether brick blocks right now because we will end up using these to navigate instead of the cobblestone in order to find our way home. I also have wood blocks with me, which obviously aren't native to the nether because this is a very fiery place. But 
Uh, wood blocks are not going to be the best thing to dot around the landscape because wood will set on fire very easily and we will end up losing that if a ghast fireballs it. So I need to make sure I know which way. See, I'm getting lost already. This is part of the, the peril of traveling in the nether. Let me see if I can quickly find my way back to where I was. Yes, over there. You see those? Those are my torches that I placed earlier. So yeah, if we just travel up here, then we're going to have to place a... Uh, a couple of nether brick there. There you go. So nether brick will actually stand out in the nether. It's the kind of stuff you're looking for anyway. So we can place those down and those will point us the right way home. So let's pop a couple more over here like so. There we go. Wonderful stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll grab another couple of blocks of nether brick and do that. But now we've found a nether fortress. This is kind of our main goal in the nether right now. We do need to explore this place a little bit further. And <laughs> now I've broken some of the blocks off of the side of it. I'm not sure where it was. Where did it go? Oh dear. I think I've lost it again. <laughs> the perils of navigating in the nether, folks. You tend to lose your directions quite quickly. I know it was somewhere around here, though, so maybe we went down here instead. Yes, we did. Of course we did. Right, there you go. <laughs> There's a lot of different uh, topography in the nether. There's lots of ups and downs and caves and ravines, and so it can be difficult to find your way a lot of the time. But nope, it looks like we're okay for now. And there's a lot of nice, easily accessible glowstone around here, which we will grab a little bit of in a second. But we're going to hop our way into this nether fortress very carefully, because once again, the fortress does contain some monsters that are more dangerous than the passive and wandering zombie pigmen. We do need to play it safe as much as we possibly can. And it's a good thing that I brought a lot of torches with me to do that. Now, this isn't necessarily the typical way you would get into a nether fortress. Occasionally, you will spot them floating over lava lakes and things like that, and so it can be possible to bridge over to them. But, uh, yeah, right now, we've we've managed to find a nice land way into here, so let's walk through. And as you can see, it's very dark in here naturally, and the texture of nether brick does not help. <laughs> it's very, very dark textured blocks, so we do need to be a little bit careful and place torches every so often as we go. And once again, we're placing the torches on the left, so we can always find the right way back. And we're going to look around in here for some stuff that is going to be very important in the near future. This over here is one of them. Now I'm going to be very, very careful around here and I'm actually going to back up a little bit and place some netherrack safety bars. We're going to be placing those above head height for us, but this is not going to be, this is, this is going to be at head height for some of the monsters that are in here. I'm thinking in particular about wither skeletons, which are some of the more dangerous monsters that you will encounter inside a nether fortress. So placing a uh, placing a bar up here will allow you to get through here without anything nasty following you. Or, well, there will be nasty things following you sometimes, but not all of the time. <laughs> Let's pop down a few more torches in here. Increasing the light in nether fortresses will also prevent things from spawning, so it can be sometimes very useful for that. So let's pop down a couple more torches in here as well. And this, this is going to be very, very useful right now. Oh, can you hear that noise? That is the sound of a blaze. We need to pay attention to where that noise is because we will try our best to go and find that. Now, uh, up here, I think we also need to block off this little doorway like so. And we'll pop down a couple of torches. There they are. Oh, okay, okay. Time to back off a little bit. Blazes are hostile. Yes, you can hear that. <laughs> they are shooting fireballs at us. And they're not explosive fireballs like the ones ghasts throw, but they are actually very, very dangerous. They can be blocked with a shield, though. So it's important to make sure you've got your shield on you and you can block when they shoot at you. And when they light up like that, that is when you know they're going to shoot. So you've got to be careful. You've got to back away and have your shield up just in case they attack you. But once they have gone out like that, they are a little bit easier to kill, so it's always worth waiting until the fire has gone out before you attack them. Maybe jump a couple of times to see if you can get a critical hit and take out the blazes. Now, we haven't achieved the uh, the main objective yet. We haven't got ourselves a blaze rod yet, but that is going to be hopefully happening fairly soon. The other amazing thing about nether fortresses is that they contain chests full of loot, and this is going to be very nice. Careful of these dead ends, though, because that is clearly a drop out onto the rest of a nether fortress. It can lead to a very, very steep drop and occasionally some lava. So we will need to block that off to make sure that we know not to go that way. But look at this. What have we got? Oh, we've got three diamonds. We've got a golden sword, which really isn't very good. We've got a saddle, which I guess we will take in case we want a horse. And then this, 
another golden sword, and two horse armors. Okay, well, horse armor is an item that can only be found in chests, at least on Java editions, so it's uh, very important to bring that with us if we want horse armor at all. So let's grab those and let's move on. Let's see if we can find any more blazes. I can see from the subtitles in the bottom right-hand corner that blazes are crackling around me, so maybe there are a couple on the roof up there, but I don't necessarily want to go on the roof right now could be very exposed to a ghast attack. Anyway, while we're here, let's gather up some of this. This is nether wart, which is another vital ingredient in potion brewing. When you're brewing potions in Minecraft, you add a nether wart to a bottle of water before you add anything else. So it's important to grab a little bit of that. And the soul sand that we've seen outside in the nether is actually very good for growing it on. It's the only thing that you can grow nether wart on. So we will grab as much of this as we possibly can so we can start a little nether wart farm because it doesn't have to be in the nether that you grow this stuff. It can be grown in the overworld as long as you have soul sand on you in the first place. So let's grab the rest of this and make sure we can get out of the little pit that it grows in here and then we'll hop out here and be on our way. Now around the corner here, there is another chest. Let's take a look. Another golden sword and another saddle, of course. There's so so little good loot in these chests a lot of the time. You won't find necessarily some amazing stuff in here, but it's always worth taking a look just in case. We got three diamonds from that other one, so that was uh, definitely nice. Definitely good to have some free diamonds. What else do we have around here? There are lots of winding corridors in these nether fortresses full of nasty stuff, so it is worth keeping our wits about us and checking where there are staircases down to other levels, which in this case just leads to a dead end. That's fine by me. Let's hop back up here and let's oh, move on down here. Hello, this is a magma cube. Magma cubes are the nether equivalent of the overworld slimes, and this one is very small. Like slimes, they occur in three sizes, and the big ones can get very large and do a lot of damage to you. So you've got to be careful around those, but they will sometimes drop magma cream, which is a vital ingredient for making potions of fire resistance. And those are very useful for exploring the nether, so if we can get hold of some magma cream today, that will be very useful. Now... Oh, we got four diamonds in that one and a gold ingot. That's the best chest yet. I like this chest. I'm going to take it with me <laughs> and let's keep exploring down this corridor and see what we have. Okay, looks like it dead ends there. Not to worry, not to worry. We've got uh, plenty of torches around, so we should always be able to find our way back. I even brought a little bit of coal with me, so in case we need to bring, uh, in case we need to make four more torches in an emergency situation, we should be able to do that. I am hoping that we run into a couple more blazes so we can complete our objective of getting a blaze rod, but a lot of the time, oh, okay. We need to be very, very careful now. I hear, I hear a rattling sound of wither skeletons. That is a concern. <laughs> we need to uh, place a safety bar now because wither skeletons are the mobs I was talking about, the ones that are three blocks tall. They're just giant skeletons and we do need to pay careful attention to where they are because they can inflict a wither effect on you, which is more deadly than poison. It sounds like they're walking around on the roof, actually, so that's maybe a good place for them <laughs> right now. We don't really want to tangle with them just yet, but let's keep moving around this fortress anyway, because I am keen to find something that we can... Oh, there they are. Look. Yep, you can see them. One of them has spotted us and is trying to come towards us, but I don't know if he will find a place to drop down and attack me from. And we'll keep lighting the place up as we go, just so we are super safe here. Okay, these two roofs seem to join. There we go, look at those guys. <laughs> They're trying to find me, but they can't find their way to me right now. Well, that's okay with me. I will hop down here and see what else I can explore. I see a blaze at the end of that corridor over there, and it looks like there is a staircase down. Let's go for that blaze if we can. Let's be let's be a little bit daring right now, and let's replant some of this nether wart so that there's some here in case we need it later. There we go. Okay, this is a big exposed section of the nether fortress. We need to be very careful, but you'll notice that the blazes can spot you from a very long distance. So when these guys are around and you're in an open space like this, you need to be very, very careful. Advance as slowly as you dare, bring up that, uh, that shield, and if you get set on fire, run away and hide until you can uh, regenerate your health, <laughs> which luckily right now I don't need to, but as long as you've got some food on you, that can be very, very handy. The ghasts are around as well, so you do need to make sure you can take out those guys. They make pretty alarming noises when you shoot at them, but just occasionally you'll be able to take one out. There you go, you saw it. <laughs> you didn't see the uh, the ghast actually get killed, but you, you heard the noise. There we go, we can uh, dodge these fireballs for a minute while we... Oh, <laughs> that one nearly hit us in the face. Got to be very, very careful around these guys. 
But if we can run over here, this nether fortress is actually really large. You'd never have known that from the, uh, the size of it on the outside, would you? Oh, and it looks like I moved the torches out of my inventory. Oh, goodness, I'm running out of them now. We're in a, a pretty dangerous spot here, I have to say. So we probably want to be running back to somewhere that's a little bit safer. There we go. Yep. <laughs> make make sure the, uh, the blazes don't fireball you in the butt. That's usually a, a good strategy. Let's dock around here for a second and make a few more torches. There we go. We can make four more. Let's pop them there. And let's try and get to that blaze over there. There are ghasts around. We knocked that other blaze off the side of there. And blazes won't fall to their deaths because they are floating mobs like this. But they uh, they will occasionally drift up and down in that little, uh, that little area that we've knocked him into. There we go. We took the brave option. We took him out. Oh, has he come back onto the bridge? I really hope he has because I want to take this guy out. Uh, he's on the parapet, so it's it's got to be careful. Nope, okay, he's he's floating off that way. Let's see if he floats back up. We've had really bad luck with blaze rods so far. I was expecting one of them to drop that already. Let's see what we can do. Let's duck behind here and heal up again. <laughs> there is a huge lava lake down there, which is why I'm not walking up onto the parapet to begin with. And I hear some wither skeletons rattling around here as well, so we've got to be very, very careful of those. Look out! I heard a ghast fireball us for a second there, <laughs> but hopefully that should not connect at any point. There are pigmen up there. Oh, okay. Up on that tower up there, you see where the fences are right there? That is a guarantee that there is a blaze spawner there. And so blazes, oh, there's another one over there. Blazes can actually be spawned in the same way that we found the spider spawner before. They can actually appear that way in uh, in the nether fortresses. And so that's that's actually a very useful guaranteed way of fighting a bunch of blazes. The only problem with that is that it will occasionally spawn multiples of them and you have to be very careful about how you fight them. They can actually do damage to you close up, so you want to be very careful. There we go, we've got two blaze rods, fantastic. That is basically all we need for now. We can sneak back out and make our way home if we want to. There are a couple of other things we could do in the nether, but you know what? I think we've had enough uh, <laughs> of the nether right now. I think we've been pushing our luck the whole time we were here. I think it is probably time to make our way home. So I'm going to ignore everything else right now. I'm going to make a beeline for the places that I put torches on the walls and hopefully we should be able to make our way home. See, that's how easy it is. If you just place torches in a spot that you can easily see and a, a spot that you can uh, remember which way leads home, it's pretty easy to get hold of these things. And for those of you who are playing along with this world, if you're playing on the Java version of Minecraft, those are the coordinates. We've got minus 241 and positive 110. So if you find that location in the nether and you're using the seed on the Java edition of Minecraft, you should be able to find this same nether fortress and that will hopefully lead you right. But make sure, as I have done, <laughs> to place a trail of torches that you can follow. Because look at this. This is so easy to get through, even though the terrain in the nether here is actually kind of confusing a lot of the time. We've got these torches here to follow and we'll always be able to find our way home. Oh, a ghast has spawned really low. This is our chance to get a fantastic achievement. Here we go. Let's see what we can do. Let's try and deflect a fireball back into his face. Oh, we took out that guy. <laughs> There's another one right over there. He hasn't spotted us, though, for some reason. So there is a an advancement for getting a, uh, a ghast fireball directed back into its face and killing it. And this one, if he, uh, if he spots me, we should be able to give this a try. Come on, buddy. I'm down here. <laughs> Looks like he's not paying attention. There we go. And I tend to do this with a bow most of the time, but it looks like I have just run out of arrows, so I'm going to have to try and do this with a sword. If you spam click with your left mouse button, you should be able to deflect the fireballs back at them pretty easily, but that is more difficult on multiplayer servers, actually, because of the, the timing involved here. Let's see if we can get him. Oh, we tr have to try and lead the shot a little bit. Go on! Yes, there we go! We got it! We got the return to sender advancement, and that was fantastic. I haven't done that with a sword for a very long time because, as I said, it is usually a lot simpler to get them from a distance with a bow. But that went well. I think that went really well. Okay. Once again, I am done pushing my luck here. It is time to head home. And I'm pretty sure I put this torch on the wrong side of the block. So let me reorient that for a second and we will be able to uh, find our way home a little easier. I think, actually, if I follow this around to over there, there we go. Yes, we should be able to make our way back to the nether portal from there. Fantastic. We found our way home. Good stuff. 
<laughs> oh gosh, it's always so nerve-wracking entering the nether, and especially when it's your first time doing it, you might find yourself getting a little bit of butterflies in the stomach, but don't worry, friends. It'll be okay. <laughs> the nether is full of dangerous things, but it's ultimately going to be conquerable. We should be able to uh, should be able to make good use of this place in time. But I'm done with it for now. I'm going to head back to the overworld, and that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.